Welcome to My Favorite Drum Gear. I'm Brady. Today is not going to be so much a review, but actually kind of an informational video where we're going to talk about splitting cables, splitting inputs, splitting drums, cymbals, whatever you want to call it. It's the process where you take a two-zone drum or cymbal and you split the signal uh, from a stereo into a mono signal so that you can actually increase the number of drums running into your electronic drum module. So stick around, we've got plenty to learn. Electronic drum modules have come a long way. There's almost no limitations now to what you can do with them. However, one limitation that does remain is the number of pads and cymbals, the number of playing surfaces that you can plug into your module to make your kit as large as you'd like it to be. Now, one workaround that exists is the process of, folks call it splitting inputs, splitting cables, splitting drums. This is where you take a stereo drum, a two-zone drum, or a two-zone cymbal in some cases, and you split the signal from the head and the rim into two separate mono signals that run back into your module. This allows you to use two separate drums or playing surfaces to get two separate sounds running into that module. In this video, we're gonna go a little bit into the weeds and look at the types of signals that these drums actually create and send. We're gonna talk about how those signals are interpreted by your drum module. We're going to look at the equipment that you need in order to actually split the signals. We'll discuss how to physically run the cables, then how to set up your actual module so that it can interpret these new signals. Then we'll talk a little bit about troubleshooting and the limitations on splitting signals and possibly have some overall thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It means a ton to me. And remember, if I get to a thousand subscribers on this page, I'm going to get a hold of Lemon's top of the line drum module and kit and we're gonna do a full review on it and see if it's something that we'd like to own. So let's get into it, but first to this. Disclaimer. Nearly everything I am about to say is technically inaccurate. The point of this video is not to explain the electrical engineering of electronic drums, but instead explain how these e-drums work in an oversimplified and practical way so that regular folks like us can try to get the most out of these things. Please don't comment if my description is technically inaccurate. I know it is. Please do comment if you have found a reliable workaround for splitting cymbals or for splitting a drum and a cymbal or if you have a tip that might help us all or if I'm missing something. So to understand how these drums work, we first need to understand how a signal is created and then sent to your module. And so all of these drums, regardless of type, use a piezo or piezo, we'll say piezo, pickup. What that is, is kind of like a microphone, but again, for our purposes, due to our disclaimer, we're going to lie here, it's a button. So this one's got a little covering on it, but um, it's usually just a, a gold or silver disc with a pair of wires running off of it, and this works as a button. Now the button, you can tell that you're pushing it, and you can tell how hard you're pushing it. And that's all it does is send those two signals that it's being pushed and how hard it's being pushed. So you can see with this pickup, if we plug this into an amplifier, we should be able to tell exactly that. So this is now telling that it's being pushed and how hard it's being pushed. And that's all these do. The other type of pickups that exist are switches. Now, a switch we'll think of as, let's think of it as an actual light switch. So when you hit it, the second you hit it, the switch turns on and then immediately turns off again. So every time we hit it, the switch goes on, the switch goes off. When we grab the symbol, it's like flipping the breaker. It turns all the power off. So what does that mean for transmitting a signal to a module? Well, when you look at a two-zone drum, what that means is that you've actually got two piezo pickups, two triggers in that drum. One of them is the head, so the older ones have a foam cone right in the middle. Other modules have moved them a little bit toward the side, but that is taking in 
the hit that it receives right from the head. Then additionally, somewhere on the side or underneath, you've got a second piezo pickup, and that is pulling in any time you hit the rim. So again, we're thinking of these as two buttons. So every time you hit the head of the drum, it's actually going to press both buttons. They're both going to feel a vibration and therefore be pressed. That sends two signals into your module, and the module then reads which one was pressed the hardest. And that's how your module knows to read if it's a head hit or a rim hit. When you hit the rim, the rim button is going to be pressed harder than the head button, and so the head button is canceled out in your module and all you hear is the rim. Vice versa, when you hit the head, it is the harder pressed button and the rim trigger, the rim sensor, the rim piezo is canceled out. When we look at symbols, they're a little bit more complicated because of that switch as opposed to just two button triggers. So again, I'm gonna lie to you here and oversimplify things in the hopes that we can make them easy to understand for everybody. Let's say that this symbol only has one button and it's located here on the bow. Additionally, it has one switch, which is located on the edge. When you strike this symbol on the bow, the button reads and the switch reads off. So you have pressed a button with the switch off and it sends that signal, switch off, button pressed, to your module and that says play a bow sound. When you hit the edge, it says button pressed because it felt the vibration, button pressed switch on because you've hit the switch, that sends that message to the module and the module says play the edge sound. Now when you grab the symbol, it again flips that breaker and says, I don't care what sound is playing, you cut it off. And keep in mind that when you're thinking about this, even if the symbol is ringing, every time you hit the symbol, it sends a brand new signal to the module. Now, as a side note, your three zone symbols, your um, lovely 18 inch lemon ride that we like so much and the others, those are effectively one switch connected to two buttons. And so they work similarly, but a little bit more complex and makes for a really good reason why you cannot ever split a three zone symbol. If I'm wrong, please comment and let me know how you've done it because I'm interested to know. So we know now what happens when you hit a drum or hit a cymbal. If it's a button and the two buttons cancel out and they send to a module like we just talked about. Now how exactly are those signals transmitted? That's through one of two different basic types of cables. You have a stereo cable or a TRS which translates to tip ring sleeve cable and you can tell those because they will have two indentated black lines usually uh, around the actual input itself and the other type is a mono signal TS cable which is tip sleeve and that one will just have one black line around the input. Now you'll hear talk sometimes about balanced and unbalanced cables just ignore it all for our purposes. Now what the stereo TRS tip ring sleeve cable does is effectively transmit one button, one pickup, let's say your head, through the tip and the other one, we'll say the rim, through the sleeve. So this single input that goes into, we'll say your snare drum, then goes immediately into your module in the snare drum input can detect both a head hit and a rim hit. If you were to plug a mono cable, a tip sleeve into your snare drum and send the other mono end into your module, it would only read either the head or the rim. So the way that we actually split a signal, split a drum, would be to plug a mono cable into our snare drum. We'll say another mono cable into our rack tom. And then those two mono cables will at some point join together and become a stereo. This then can plug into a single input in our module and you can read the tip, being the snare drum we'll say, and the rim, being the tom, as independent signals that you can then manipulate through your module itself. So what's the equipment we need to do that? There are lots of options, but the two probably most useful types are this, which is simply a cable that has a stereo at one end and splits itself into two mono inputs at the other. So you would envision plugging the stereo end into your module and then selecting two different surfaces to plug a mono into each. 
or these much smaller Y splitters, which do require you to have more cables, but are a little bit more versatile. These will take a stereo input into one end from your module, and then you can split them into two mono inputs and send them to your drums. If you are using a TD-17, a TD-9, if you're using anything that uses a cable snake as opposed to individual inputs as far as your rolling drums go, you'll want to use these because the snake itself has only male inputs, and so this female input is what you need in order to split off. One note when you're shopping for these is that consensus online and elsewhere says that you need to get a cable that has a 100,000 ohm OHMS resistor built into it. For Roland models, this is required. For other models, I guess it's recommended. I'm not positive on the reason why, and the internet doesn't seem to be positive either, other than a thought that the 100,000 ohm resistors give you kind of enough headroom in order to get all of the different signal strengths that are sent between all the different pads to all the different modules. And so for longevity of your pads and your module, it's recommended that you find a splitter with 100,000 ohms resistor built into it. Now, where can you get these? Drumsplitters.com sells a very popular model. This one comes from Silverline Audio, which you can find again on eBay and on Amazon. And I've been very happy with these little Y splitters. You can also order Roland brand through places like Sweetwater, but keep in mind that the name brand, as is all things Roland, are going to cost you significantly more than buying somebody else's brand. The other piece of equipment that you will need when you're splitting drums is additional mono cables. Imagine this coming off of your cable snake from your module. It plugs in, and now you've got these guys, but these female ends won't match up to the female ends on your drums. You need just an additional cable to get you there. Since you're running mono inputs from the drums into the splitter, just get mono cables. And generally you're running pretty short distances with your cables mounted onto your rack and going into your drums. And so I found these relatively short pedal board mono cables to do the trick. So let's take a look at how to physically set these up. As far as physically splitting inputs, you'll see that it's really not a difficult process at all. Here I have the stereo input from my Tom one running from my TD 17 modules cable snake. Here, I have a Silverline Audio Y cable that I've just attached with some zip ties to my rack. I'm going to plug the single end, this is the stereo end, into my Tom 1 input. And then using these short mono cables, I'm going to plug into one side and into a Tom and the other one into the input and into the Tom. Now when I hit Tom 1, it will transmit Tom 1 as a head, and when I hit Tom 2, it will transmit Tom 1 as a rim. So here's the process we go into. If we look, you'll see that Tom 1 and Tom 2 have now been split, and this is the head. So most importantly, what we need to do is turn head rim off. Now what I'll do is assign my top tom. Now they're the same. I'll take my second tom and turn it to tom two. Moving on, I've split these two as tom two head and rim. This becomes Tom three. This becomes Tom four. The next thing you'll want to do is go into your pad settings. Then for each Tom, go into advanced settings. And we're going to go to the rim settings now and look at the rim gain. Now what the rim gain does is basically adjust the volume of the rim to make it louder or softer. 
So you'll see with a rim gain of zero, that first tom, which is actually assigned to the rim, makes zero sound as well. As we start to increase the gain, we do get some volume out of the rim assigned tom. And the hope here is to get to where with the same velocity, we're getting the same readout from both the rim and the tom. So let's talk about some issues and limitations that come when you're actually splitting inputs, turning one input from your module into two separate playing surfaces. The most important is that you lose the head and rim for each drum. So for example, if you were to split your snare drum, when you hit a rim shot, you won't get a rim shot sound. If you're one of those folks who likes to set up, say, a floor tom with a cowbell or auxiliary percussion sound on the rim, you lose that. The other big thing that affects drums is you know now that if you hit the rim and the head of one drum running normal stereo inputs at the same time, you won't get the sound of both the head and the rim at the same time. That's a crosstalk elimination basically. It does that so that you don't have various sounds every time you play the drums. Remember earlier we talked about when you push both buttons on a surface at the same time, it sends the signal and says which one was louder, and that's the one that it plays. What that means when you split drums is that if you are running, say, Tom 1, and you're splitting that input into Tom 1 and Tom 2, if you play both toms at exactly the same time, one of them will not trigger. Only the one that receives the louder button press, the harder button press, will trigger, and the other one won't. So if you do a lot of, we'll call jungle drums type sounds, a whole lot of tom work where you're playing two toms at the same time, you know, your pattern goes together as it goes apart, or playing those big Phil Collins double toms down the, down the kit sounds, splitting drums might not be the answer for you because when you hit the same drum that's been split into two surfaces, only one of them will sound. Now you can be smart about this and use workarounds. If you're the kind of person that's usually playing toms one and two, two and three, three and four, you might be able to separate, say, the tom one coming from your module into physical toms one and three, and then your other two into two and four. And so now you won't ever actually be playing the same drum at the same time. I hope that makes sense. So the most important limitation now to splitting signals is when it comes to symbols. If you have found a way to split symbols reliably and accurately, then please comment and let us know exactly how you've done it. Um, it's, it's difficult when it's able to happen. Splitting a drum with a cymbal is just kind of a no-no, and splitting two cymbals is really unreliable as well. And here's why. We talked earlier about how these are effectively set up as a single button with an on-off switch on the edge. That means that the stereo signal coming from this right now is, we'll say, head is a button and rim is simply a switch. Remember, when you hit the cymbal on the edge, it says switch up, button pressed. Now imagine taking that button input and sending it to a drum. Now when we hit the symbol on the edge, it says switch up, but there's not necessarily a button to go with it. So if we have this set as the head, then every time we crash, regardless of where we crash, it should reliably work. However, when we now send the other signal to a drum, if we hit the drum and the cymbal at the same time, it's now telling it perhaps that there is a switch flipped and 
that the button's being pressed. Likewise, when we hit the drum, it might somehow read, hey, there's just a switch going and we don't know what it's attached to. Regardless of what settings you have in your actual module, if you set this up, if you're, switch, if you're splitting, say, a cymbal and a drum and you set it up as like a PD-8X, which should be two button triggers, hitting this switch, regardless of what it's reading as, is just going to cause some unexpected issues. Now, if you've got two single zone pads that you wanted to set up, like some of the old, uh, what, PD-8s, and you wanted to set them up as single zone crashes, that should work fine for you. So I hope that this has given you a little bit of better understanding on how we actually split inputs from our module to increase the number of drums. If this has helped you even a little bit, please like and subscribe. Remembering, if I get to a thousand subscribers, I'm going to get a hold of Lemon's top of the line electronic drum kit shipped from Alibaba, and I'm going to give it a complete thorough run through and find out why not many of them have sold in the United States, and maybe we're all missing out on something. And finally, please don't comment if I have technically described something incorrectly. I know I have. This is not a video for electrical engineers. This is a video for drummers trying to figure out how they can get more drums out of their kit. However, if you found a reliable workaround for splitting cymbals, a better way to split drums, a way to split a drum and a cymbal reliably, if you have any good tips that will help other viewers to work their way through this, or if you think I've missed something, please comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to think. Thanks for watching.